lift my hands and say, I'll lift my hands and say, I'll bow before you and say, Only you are worthy of the glory. Only you are worthy of my praise.
mountains tremble with its doom. There is a river whose stream may glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the most high. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her right her. The nations rage. What is his voice? The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come and behold the works of the Lord. How he has wrought desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. He breaks the bow and he shatters the spear. Burns the chariot with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I'm exalted among the nations. I'm exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is already. Lord, that was been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth. Whatever thou hast formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. Thou turnest men back to the dust, and says, Turn back, O children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight, but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. Thou dost sweep men away, they are like a dream, like grass which is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by thy anger and thy wrath. By thy wrath we are overwhelmed. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee or secret sins in the sight of thy countenance. For all our days pass away under thy wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The, years of our, the days of our lives are threescore years and ten, or even by reason of strength fourscore. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of thy anger and thy wrath according to the fear of thee? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on thy servants. Satisfy us in the morning with thy steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad in all our days. Make us glad as many days as thou hast afflicted us and as many years as we have seen evil. Let thy work be manifest to thy servant and thy glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. Today we are gathered for the home going of Sister Carmen Samuels Shaw. Sister Shaw lived a beautiful life, a beautiful Christian life. She lived a life to the glory and honor of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So today we weep and mourn, we sad, we saddened, but we also rejoice that another soldier has gone on home, has landed safely, has touched down safely in glory. And for this we give God praise. As you take your seats at this time, we'd like for Sister Anderson the pastor's wife of our local congregation here at Montreal West 
to come and give opening remarks on behalf of herself and her husband, Pastor Joel Anderson, who desired with all his heart to be here. Spoke with him this morning, but he also had a mission to take care of in, in Jamaica that was planned for so long ago, the, uh, the, the tombing of his own mom today. So we want to be in prayer for Pastor Anderson. His prayers are with us, and we're so glad that Sister Anderson is here with us today. God bless you, Sister Anderson. Bless God. I would like to give honor to God for his grace and mercies towards us. Greetings to everyone present here today. Firstly, I want to express sincere condolences to the Shaw's family and pray that the grace of God will continue to sustain you during this difficult season. I also want to use this opportunity on behalf of Pastor Anderson, Bishop Lee, other leaders of the Montreal West Church of God of Prophecy, to welcome everyone who has taken the time to be here today to celebrate the life of our dear sister, mother, and friend, Carmen Shaw. We have all come today to share in this moment because at some point in our lives, we have been touched by this stalwart woman of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Sister Shaw. So in the absence of Pastor Anderson, welcome to this ongoing celebration and God bless you all. Come on, put your hands together for being here. I would like to acknowledge the presence of Bishop Greenaway and thank him for graciously accepting the task of standing in for my husband today. Thank you, Bishop. Welcome to his wife, beautiful wife, Minister Christine Greenaway. Welcome is also extended to Bishop Caston Johnston and Sister Johnson from Ottawa. Welcome to our moderator for today's service, Minister Brian Walker. Welcome is also extended to Pastor Aston Cole. And if there is any other clergy sitting in the audience, welcome and great to have you today. <laughs> Pastor Anderson is unavoidably absent today and has asked me to share this tribute with you. It is with heavy hearts that we gather to get today to honor the memory of our dear sister, Carmen Shaw, who has departed from our maids. She was not just a member of our congregation, but a cherished friend, mother to many, and devoted servant of God, and a beacon of light to all who knew her. Amen? Amen? Sister Shaw embodied the true spirit of faith, love, and compassion. She touched countless lives with her unwavering kindness, generosity, and wisdom. She was always ready to extend a helping hand, offer a listening ear, to share a welcoming word. I remember two weeks after relocating to Montreal, my wife was very ill, and Sister Shaw was one of the first to visit and to take a pot of soup, and that's why I'm so healthy today. <laughs> her kindness has no limits. As we mourn her passing, let us always celebrate her remarkable life and the profound impact she had on each of us. Let us remember her devotion to God her dedication to her family, and her commitment to serving others. Though Sister Shaw may no longer be with us in body, her spirit will continue to inspire and guide us. Let us honor her legacy by carrying forward her message of love, faith, and hope. To the family and loved ones of Sister Shaw, may you find solace in the memories you shared, strength in the love that surrounds you, and comfort 
in the knowledge that she now rests in eternal embrace of her heavenly father. Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. Let us give thanks to Almighty God as we commend Sister Shaw into God's loving arms and as we offer our support and solidarity to one another during this time of grief. May the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. With deepest, deepest sympathies, Pastor Anderson. At this time, I'll invite our moderator to come forward. Thank you. So welcome and good morning to all of our guests, family, and friends that are in the room today. Much better. Good morning. Not Bishop. <laughs> oh. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of our friends and family that are watching online all over the world. We are at the celebration of life of Sister Carmen Samuel Shaw. And really what we are doing is celebrating a life, a wonderful life. As someone enters into the kingdom of heaven, we should be celebrating. And so it's a celebration of life. So I am much more informal than we previously had. However, I've been told that as I moderate, that I have three things that I should be doing. So I am Brian Walker. I am the son-in-law of Sister Shaw. I am her favorite son-in-law. Don't mind that I am the only. <laughs> Let's focus on the fact that I am the favorite <laughs> son-in-law. <laughs> I have been told that I have, my job is very simple and easy, for those that are not standing up here that said that. And I have three things that I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to make sure that the celebration continues smoothly. And so if I'm tugging on your jacket, it is not because I'm begging for change. It's because I fear three things in life. I fear the wrath of God, and so I try to act right. I fear the belt in the Walker's household, so I try to act right. And I fear the death stares that happen on the front row because we are over time. And so please help me to act right <laughs> the second thing that i've been told that is part of my role is that i need to keep it light they said it's a celebration they say that sister shaw would say no 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 too much block 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 and so in that case this is why we're blue today and so they said too much dead dead so we need to keep it light today and celebrate her life And then the last thing that I've been told, and most important, is I need to ensure that Sister Shaw gets the burial today on time. And so we will end on time. Thank you very much to Sister Anderson, in lieu of her husband that gave the opening remarks, and to acknowledge all of the ministers, the various ministers in the room. I will just add a couple others as I've been given instruction. As I said, I am just following directions. If there's anything that goes wrong, you can send it to Ms. Erica Carmen Frederica Shaw <laughs> at AOL.com. <laughs> Welcome to the Greenaways, Pastor Bishop Greenaway and Sister Chris. Good morning to Pastor Cole. Good morning to Pastor Lee. Good morning. Good morning to Bishop S.A. Morrison. Good morning to Bishop Johnson, my very first pastor years ago. Good morning to Pastor Robinson. 
Jackson. Good morning to Apostle Dort Galson Dotman. Close? Okay. Good morning to Minister Scarlett, Santa Scarlett. And, a morn and good morning to Evangelist Brown. If I've missed anyone, I apologize. God knows your name. And if you have any issues, please send it to Erica. Levon Shaw at hotmail.com. <laughs> we have many guests in the room, guests coming from all over. We have guests in the room from Jamaica. Welcome. A little chilly for you, but welcome. We have guests coming from a variety of islands in the Caribbean. Welcome. We have guests from England both in person and online, welcome. We have guests coming scattered across the US, numerous states, New York and Boston and Michigan and Texas and Virginia and, and Florida and all over. Welcome to you all. And we have guests coming from Calgary and some from Toronto and all the way from Montreal. We have guests in the room. Welcome. At this time, we will call up Pastor Lee that will do the prayer of invocation. Pastor Lee? And at the end of Pastor Lee's prayer, we will go into a time of praise and worship. Praise God. We give thanks to God for his manifold blessings today. Let us pray. <coughs> o Lord, O Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and suckling us, thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heaven, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the star which thou hast ordained. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards us, thy children. You have favored us with your blessings, and from morning by morning new mercies we see. All that we have needed, thy hands has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men who put their trust under the shadow of thy wing, dear saints, are dwelt secure. We thank you for your blessings today, Lord, and for this beautiful day. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. We can attest to the fact that you are great, and there is no one else like you. Your power is great, and there is no, none like you under the earth or, or above the earth. And so we come to the to ce celebrate Sister Carmen's homegoing service, Lord. We, we are grateful for the life she has lived and that we have encountered great things happened in our life. You are a miracle. And so, Lord, it, it pleases thee to take unto her, her, her soul today, Lord God, and that she sh shall be resting in peace. Father, we thank you for the work that she has done. She has accomplished the labor that she has done in our midst, Lord, not, from, not, not only from Canada, but from Jamaica. And so we pray that the God of all grace will grace us with your heavenly presence today. I pray that you'll overshadow us with thy Holy Spirit. I pray to bless the moderator. I pray to bless every speaker that shall come on the scene today, Lord God. And help them that they shall speak the, through the inspiration of God. And that they shall be impacted by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you. We lift our hearts to you in praise. We thank you for everyone that come to celebrate her death. O oh God, you are the God of life, and you are the God of death. For the, uh, no resurrection to them that are called by the, thy name. O oh God of heaven, we praise you. We bless your name, Lord God Almighty. O oh, hold us with the right hand of your righteousness, and give us grace to trust you. For you are great, and there is none other like you. Father, we pray for your loving kindness and your tender mercy amongst us, Lord God and grant us peace in the midst of the storm, 
and that the life that she, lives that she has impacted shall permeate through uh, Montreal and that she shall be a testimony to many that, that have seen and heard and listened to her crying unto thee from day to day. Father, we look to you by faith and thank you for, for the rest of the service today and everything shall be done to the honor and glory of thy precious name. We beseech you, Lord God, that you'll take us through the dar darkness of night and help her, Lord, that even those who have seen her life, they shall be a, a living example. Father, we co co come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Confiscate every power uh, that come against you, Lord God, and that the people shall walk in fear of God and live to the honor and glory of thy precious name. We look to you by faith and take charge of every, everything on the, uh, on the program, Righteous Father, and that the song that we sing shall be a, a blessing to everyone in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your blessings and blessing interment uh, that shall be taking place after this funeral and that many hearts shall be converted unto thee. In Jesus' name we pray. morning good morning good morning we are here to celebrate Carmen Shaw we are here to celebrate Carmen Shaw come on everybody can we stand this is a celebration of life let me tell you something I remember sister Shaw I one minute guys I want to tell you something before we start everybody know that sister Shaw was a very quiet person right but I remember one Sunday, I don't know if you guys remember one, she was either preaching or giving a testimony. I think we were at St. Jack. And there was a wooden podium. And Sister Shaw, I don't know if it was the spirit, and when Sister Shaw knocked the podium, it broke. We were shocked. This is an amazing woman of God. And these were the songs that were chosen. Hallelujah. So we're going to start off and we're going to sing to God's glory. Put your hands together. We are starting with As I Travel Through the Pilgrim Land. I want to hear your voices and the words are going to be up there. Hallelujah to Jesus.
morning. Lift Jesus higher this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. clap of praise this morning hallelujah I love you Lord and I know this is such a well known song and I'm inviting everyone whether you know him or not today can be the day that you accept him as your Lord and Savior Your voice. You have led me to the 
song that is a song of sister Shaw's life all of God's life all of her life God has been so faithful amen amen at this time we will call Ashley Griffith to come and read a series of scriptures that was selected from sister Shaw Ashley is the goddaughter of sister Shaw morning church. Uh, I'm not going to cry. I'm going to try. <laughs> that too. Um, just a little thing before, <laughs> so please don't tug on me. <laughs> um, you know, after the death of my father, you know, Sister Shaw was even there, even in her own um, situation that she was dealing with. And that just shows the type of heart that she had. And every birthday, she did not miss a beat, <laughs> did not miss a beat for me, <laughs> and was always there for me. Always took me in when my mom had to work. She would keep me, I would sleep over. Everything, she's been there for me, and I will miss her dearly. <laughs> but I know she's in a better place, and I know she is no longer suffering. <coughs> and that's the most important part. Um, so I would like to share with you today three of her favorite scriptures. <laughs> um, and I'll be reading by the, if we can all stand actually, <laughs> reverence. And I'll be reading the NIV translation. The first scripture reading is from Proverbs 3, verse 1 to 6. 
My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your head, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Second scripture is from Psalms 22, verse 10. From birth, I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Scripture number three, James four, verse eight. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Here ends the reading of God. Amen. 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 And as you continue to stand, we'll have a congregational hymn at this time. God. Hallelujah. Some glad morning. All right. Praise the Lord. Some glad morning when this life is over. I fly away. Second reading, 
and it will be done by Kaylee Walker, better known as Kylie Walker, and written by her sister, Kristen Walker. It's still not working? There we go. Good morning. <laughs> um, I'm just Kaylee, if we haven't met yet. Um, sorry, again, quickly I will say something. Um, I didn't know much of my grandma. I'm learning a lot of my grandma over these trips. Um, I knew her as the person, if auntie says no, she will say yes. <laughs> um, and if me and Kristen ever needed anything, she would go get it at any time, no matter what. She was the best, she remained the best. Even when I came and visited her and she was having a harder time, she was still just the best grandma to us. And it's good to see everyone here and it's good to know that so many people loved her. She was loved by many. So for the reading. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. One of a kind, I am. Like the flowers in the field, all needing sunlight, but display non-identical forms of beauty when blossoming. I am unique. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. One of a kind, I am. As you form me together in love, I fear you because you thought of me and created me. But wonderful you, but wonderful you are because you thought of me and created me. I am loved. My frame was hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. One of a kind I am, that my strength and my skeletal structure is no shocker to you as you put me together in the secret place that no man's eyes can see. I am strong. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. One of a kind, I am. Before breathing life into my lifeless body, you put in order the plans you had for me, called my name and put me together in the world, hoping that I would choose you so we could be together again. One of a kind, I am to be with my father again. One of a kind you are to see us again. I am free and I am patiently waiting to reunite with my old friend again. Someone told me that her dad is a lovely man. I don't know who said it, but I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, we'll have a series of video tributes. Um, one from Bishop Thompson, and the other one, sorry, will be a live one from the Booth family. Bishop Thompson. Mixed emotions that I bring you all greetings in that wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'd like to especially express condolences to Brother Shaw, to Erica, to Jason, to Paulette, and to the extended families on the passing of Carmen Shaw. We realize that this gathering is never easy because it is filled with mixed emotions as you celebrate this life that was well lived. Um, Sister Shaw was one of a kind. She was someone who would greet you with a bright smile. She would have a word of encouragement. She was kind, she was compassionate, and she was a lady who loved the Lord. Psalm 116 verse 15 reminds us, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints or his saints. Uh, we know that it's not precious to us because it's a great loss and you, you are grieving as much as you're celebrating, you're grieving. But we thank God that 
In his sight, the death of his saints are precious. Why is it precious? Because the work that God started in Carmen Shaw's life long ago has come to an end. And he saw it fit to take her home to be with him. One of the beautiful things about the Christian faith is that death is not final. There is no finality to death because there is life after death. And so I'd like to encourage the family and the friends who are gathered to celebrate this wonderful life. That one of these days we'll see Carmen Shaw again and it will be a great time of celebration. In the meantime, I know these are mean times as you grieve, but in the meantime, my prayer is that God's grace will comfort you. God's grace will keep you. As you grieve, let us grieve knowing that there's hope in the Lord. One of the things we have when someone passes along is the memories, cherish memories. I'd like to encourage you to hold on to those precious memories. I'm so thankful that before Sister Shaw passed, she was able to finish her book and to share her life and her testimony with us. So celebrate those wonderful memories. Celebrate the memories of this kind, compassionate woman of God. And let those thoughts guide you today. Again, on behalf of my wife and I, I would like to express our condolences to the family. We're so sorry we can't be there to celebrate her life with you. But our prayers are with you. We grieve alongside you. Just know that you know prayers. May God bless you as you celebrate this wonderful life. Blessings open you. Um, for those of you who do not know, Sister Shaw, Sister Carmen, as we always called her, she has been a part of her family for as long as I can remember. And those of you who knows mom, that she always says she is the daughter she never gave birth to. And not only she, was she a natural mother and a mentor to her, but she was also her spiritual mom, because she was the one who led her to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Of course, Sister Carmen lived such a life that I know she will be a bright shining star on mom's crown. Amen. Amen. Uh, she, you know, she has been our sister, my siblings and I, we looked up to her as our big sister. Uh, that's the way mom, I mean, she engraved that into her, uh, us. And so she means a lot to us. I will not be able to say all the things that she has been to us because time would not allow me to. But I'd like to share with you that when I came to Montreal, I lived with the Shaws for many years, and I don't have any regrets at all. As you have heard already, she was a quiet, kind, very generous person. And when she gave her life to the Lord, she lived a committed, dedicated, faithful life unto God. And she was a very strong prayer warrior. All of us who knew her can tell you that she was an encourager. She always has a kind word to share with everyone. And of course, she not only shared God's word, but she also shares her cooking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and her love for baking sweet potato pudding. Yeah. 
And she did a good job at them both. <laughs> Amen. You know, we are mourning her loss, but those of us who are left to mourn her loss, we do realize that the kind of life that she lived is an example for us to follow. And if we want to see her again, we're going to have to be steadfast. Yes. We're going to have to be unmovable. Yes, yes, yes. You know, as much as we miss her, but we know the scripture tells us absent to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we know we will meet her again. I rejoice in the hope that I know where she is at this moment and that we will be able to see her again. And of course, I will not be able to get through this. So I, I just want to say, farewell, Sister Carmen. Rest in peace. We will see you again in the sweet by and by where there will be no more pain. There will be no more suffering. There will be no more death. All will be peace forevermore and the happy golden shore. So sleep on Sister Carmen and take your rest and may your soul rest in perpetual peace. Thank you. Thank you, Sister May. I want to take this moment just to say thank you and to acknowledge a few individuals. You know, death and grief can be a funny, figgle sort of thing. When you look at it, it can cause some people to be angry and some people to be frustrated. It can cause some people to lash out. It can cause some people to start bargaining with God until they get to a point of some sort of acceptance. And it's never linear. It never just goes that way. It goes zigzag for a long time. And so death can be a funny thing. And all of us face it individually. And so when a family goes through a tough time, sometimes you don't even know what to do to help to comfort them. But can I tell you one thing that I see that can really help? A, just your presence. You don't even have to say anything, but just your presence. And the other thing is food. Good food. Cook food. Dumpling can really help. Akian salt fish can really help. A seafood broil can really help. And as I've been here over the last couple little while, some people have really blessed us with some good food. And so we couldn't leave without saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to make an attempt to say some names, but I know I'm going to miss some because the food was just that good. <laughs> Sister May, Sister Boo, thank you. Lisa and Chester and Omar, Omar. Omar, and Cadell, and Fran, and Sister Jean, and Yay! Sister Charlene, <laughs> and Chantel, and the Baileys, and the Lee family, and so many more that I've left off. Bless you, Jesus, for some very good food. Because when you break bread, and you're able to laugh, and to speak about the person, it helps to, just to move you through that linear of death. So thank you so very much. And if I've forgotten anyone, please send your emails to <laughs> Erica, Lakeisha, Shaw at hotmail.com. And at this time, we will have comments. 
from Pastor Robinson, which is Sister Shaw's niece, and then the selection from the Montreal West Choir will come up right after. Pastor Robinson. Hello, everyone. We give God thanks and praise to be in his house one more time to celebrate such an occasion. Hallelujah. The going home service of one of my favorite aunts. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we are just a small branch of her large family. And after I got to 50, I stopped counting. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they all send their love and they're all watching right now. Hallelujah. Because I sent them the link. But you know, as I am listening and I'm hearing about everything about my great aunt and the legacy that she has left, amen. I want to be like her. Amen. Don't you want to be like her? Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And as we know, we are people and children of hope. Amen. Ah, and we know. Amen. Hallelujah. Those that die in Christ. Hallelujah. They are the ones that shall be risen first. Hallelujah. And the day of judgment. Hallelujah. And I can hear my auntie say in Revelation 1 verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Not only that. Hallelujah. And have the keys of hell and death. God bless you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, before we start the selection for the choir, I just want to thank Sister Gail, the director of the Montreal Gospel Choir, for allowing me this privilege to, um, to direct this song. And um, just wanted to share my two parents. Um, my dad used to play the bass, but yes, my mom, yes. my mom, she was uh, in the choir since yeah. she was in Jamaica. Yes, that's true. Um, yeah, yeah. And she really loved to sing, and I believe that's probably where I get my ear for music. <laughs> um, my sister was a part of the, uh, the school board choir, so she really encouraged us in, in, in the arts. And um, at this moment, we're going to share a selection. Um, Sister Michelle will be leading the song, Oh How Sweet to Rest in the Arms of Jesus.
His perfect plan need no expansion. I can hear the ransom church start to sing. Amazing grace. have a second round of tributes, one from Pastor Trevor Reed, and a live tribute from the Ford family right after. Pastor Trevor. To Brother Shaw, Erica, Jason, and Paulette, I want to extend to you our deepest condolences. We really love Sister Shaw. She was a faithful, godly woman, an encourager, a servant's heart a hard, diligent worker, both for the Lord and family and business. Um, when you think of Proverbs 31, Sister Shaw was that. She was a virtuous woman. And um, she joins with the testimony of many of Montreal West mothers in Zion who prevailed in prayer, who sought the Lord, whose prayers were answered, who loved their family and the church deeply. Uh, we thank God for Sister Shaw. And uh, our prayers are with this family. We will be we will miss Sister Shaw. Um, it's hard to think of Montreal West without Sister Shaw. She was always there. Uh, we could depend on her. She was a servant. Uh, she loved her family. She loved the people of God. She loved the church of God and she served the church with her whole heart. I remember every time an evangelist came to town, we didn't even have to ask, but Sister Shaw was ready and available and there would be meals delivered. Uh, she would offer help wherever she could. She would support ministries wherever she could. And I'm just so thankful for the time that we knew her and thankful for the impact that she's had on my life, on our family, uh, she was a good godmother to our children, and I'm just so thankful for her life and her testimony. Um, no one could find a woman like Sister Shaw, and she really will be missed. And so to the family, we thank you for sharing her with us and for her living the life that God has called her to live until she sees him again in glory. Praying for you, Brother Shaw, praying for you, Erica, Jason, and Paulette. 
May God comfort you and strengthen you in this time. Hello everyone. Good morning. We are the fourth family, an extended family. Yeah, I, I don't know why I felt very comfortable coming up here, but at this time I just feel like crying. <laughs> this is a tribute to our dear sister Carmen Shaw. She was a phenomenal woman a committed child of God, a visionary. She was creative, and let us not forget her calm, pleasant, and humble demeanor. It did not matter what she was wearing. She was always immaculately dressed <laughs> because she always wear a radiant smile. Amen. And looking back at the, the pic pictures, tributes, she was always smiling. I recall in 1973, when she was about to migrate to, Can to Montreal, Canada. Back then, the word migrate <laughs> was rarely used, if at all. <laughs> the expression was just that, you're going abroad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall if there was a send-off for her, or there was just an announcement at the church where we worship, and this church was the Nazareth Gospel Hall in Cross Keys where we were members. And if there was an announcement, it was just that Sister Shaw, Sister Carmen Samuels, was leaving to Canada. Back then, one did not secretly leave and then inform family and friends when they were already at the airport. <laughs> in some cases, as it were in my case and my siblings' case, there would be a chartered bus to transport friends and family <laughs> to accompany the traveler to the airport to see them off. Now, leaving Jamaica, t things have changed, time has changed, and many people are better off leaving in secrecy. <laughs> um, my grandmother informed Sister Samuels, Nadia Shaw, that her daughter lives in Montreal and she should try to link up with her so that Carmen would not be lonely. As fate would have it, Sister Carmen was out shopping one day and met a lady. They struck up a conversation. This was not uncommon when you meet someone that looked like you, as there was not too many of us <laughs> living in Montreal <laughs> at that time. Sister Shaw asked the lady, who was the late Miss Union Longley? And I believe some of her children are here. Could you wave your hand? Miss Union's children, okay. Two of them are here. Oh, and they're, oh, okay, there they are. <laughs> so, Miss Union informed her. She asked if she knew a lady by the name of Emily Ford from Resource Manchester. The response was, Yes, we live together, we share an apartment. <laughs> the connection was made. They eventually met and started worshiping at the Montreal West Church of God of Prophecy. I think they were worshiping at the Y at the time. As, as shared in 
Sister Shaw's tribute to my mom a few months ago. She wrote, thank you for being my older sister, friend, and mentor. I met you at the bus stop in 1973 after I came to Canada. You invited me to church, and ever since, we have been attending church together. Also, every Sunday and after church, you would invite me home for dinner. They were loyal friends, prayer partners, and faithful confidant. Their friendship spanned 50 long years. For years, our family laughs and cried together. We have walked through many seasons together. George and Heather spent many hours babysitting Jason and then babysitting Erica. Well, my first job, it didn't last long, was babysitting Jason. <laughs> 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 they, 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 they did that until Paulette came along. One of George's fondest memories of Sister Carmen is that as a young driver, Carmen rented cars for Georgia to drive <laughs> and would let her use her car when she is away. There was a single car tree, car and tree, <laughs> incident with Carmen's car. <laughs> Did someone say the, the tree was at fault? <laughs> because the tree was where it shouldn't be. <laughs> Sister Shaw's reaction was priceless. Her reaction to the incident has helped my sisters to develop their value system, in particular towards material things and people. She remains a positive role model in many young ladies' life. She is admired for her business acumen and the harmony she strives for between family, her church, and her work. Thank you, Carmen, for brightening our lives. Thank you, Lord, for lending us one of your most precious children. Bless the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Carmen, Stanley, and Emily had individual and independent friendship. One of the gifts God has given us is friendship. Proverbs says, that there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And Jesus says, greater love hath no man than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. Carmen, Stanley, Emily, and I have a mutual friend. And I have a feeling that you have that mutual friend too. <laughs> His name is Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. When it rains, it pours. Aren't you glad that Jesus knows? Amen. Amen.
for when it rains, it pours. The storm comes and rises and rises, rise. billows roll. Oh, just seek Jesus, point me to it. What a beautiful tribute. At this time, we'll have a video tribute from Leslie Samuel, the baby brother of Sister Shaw. And right after that, we'll have the eulogy from Erica Shaw. Time to sing happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Auntie. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Goodbye, Carmen. You had the grace to prevail, though so many others failed. You were the shining star to our family. Even in the darkest times, you stood out. Born a humble child, you became a legend. That legend will always be remembered. All those who knew you can attest. My darling sister, rest in peace.
morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, I'm going to take a little time because we actually have time. <laughs> this is a rare thing, but I don't want to cut into the message because it's very important that we hear the word of God. Um, but I just want to start off by saying, as, as my brother-in-law has said, it has been overwhelming to be here and to see and to experience the love that has been poured out to our entire family. And I have to say thank you. And I know that those are just two simple words, but they are the only words that I have in my heart and our family has to say because the gratitude is, is beyond, it's beyond. My mom is a humble woman. She's a humble, humble person. And I know to see so many people here just paying tribute to her, it, it's overwhelming for all of us, but I know she would appreciate it. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Really, really, I really do thank you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just stop there. Um, uh, I'll read and embellish. Uh, my life story, my testimony, and this passage is taken from her book. I see my life as an amazing journey filled with miracles after miracles. See Shaw, my life test, my story, my life, my, my life story, my testimony. Affectionately known as Sister Shaw, Carmen Leone Samuels was born in the district of Salmontown, Manchester to Francis Swaby and Ernest Samuel on May 28, 1947. Um, last Wednesday when we were here at church, there was somebody who shared a tribute who said, the best babies are born in May. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Nola. <laughs> she is predeceased by her brothers Thomas and Kenneth Petro and is survived by her youngest brother, Leslie Samuels, whose voice you heard and who regrettably could not make it, but he is in Jamaica watching today. Thank you, Uncle Leslie. While Carmen looked to her mother as her, a hero in her life, Carmen herself became a hu true hero at the tender age of nine when she rescued her mom and six-month-old brother from a near-death experience while her, brother, while her mom prepared food for her baby brother. After hearing a loud bang, she rushed to find them covered in severe burns from the boiling pot water that crashed to the floor. My grandmother suffered from severe seizures, and so this was a seizure that was taking place. My mom later discovered that my grandmother had suffered from a seizure which left my grandmother and, and her and my uncle hospitalized for six weeks. This was a time that my mom actually spent with her father and it was a very tough time for my mom to be away from her mother for such a long period of time. And she shared that with us as well in her book. In spite of the dire circumstances that forced her to end her formal education before entering high school, Carmen spent much of her youth working to pay for her younger brother's education and assisting her mother with her health care costs. To this day, my uncle attributes his upbringing and his um, ability to be where he is today because of my mom. And he was uh, a teacher in Jamaica for many, many years. Um, at the tender age of 20, Carmen lost her mom and returned to her home parish to raise her brother. During this time, Carmen became a skilled dressmaker and sewed her first dress to come to Canada and honed her talents as a caregiver. And I know based on things that I've heard and what people have experienced, my mom is the ultimate caregiver, yeah. not just to us, yeah. but to so many people yeah. in this room. During this time, during this time, no, she was, um, she was supported by a very special person, as you heard, Ruby Booth. Ruby welcomed Carmen into her family of 11 children and mentored Carmen into adulthood. On September 11th, 1973, my mom migrated to Canada with a British family. She joined the Church of God of Prophecy in Montreal where she was an early member and active prayer leader. And as we heard on a Wednesday night, my mom used to ride her bike 
to church regularly. And I guess that's where I get my love of biking. Uh, I remember a story, my mom, um, where we currently live is not too far from the first house where my mom migrated. And I remember taking a walk with my mom and she showed me the house and she told me the story when she got up one morning, uh, she migrated in September as you heard, and she got up one morning in either January or like sometime in the winter, put on her coat and her skirt because she always wore a skirt. And when she opened the door, she was licked with a piece of cold. <laughs> and her, the, her employer said to her, Carmen, you can't go outside without some pants. And she said, no, I don't wear pants. And when that cold liquor, <laughs> she turned right back around and went inside and put on some pants. <laughs> it's true. Um, at the Church of God of Prophecy in Montreal, she built long-lasting friendships, reunited with loved ones, as you heard by Sister Angela, and met Stanley Shaw, her devoted husband of 49 years. <laughs> now, you know I'm the belly wash, and so people, or wash belly. See, I don't, I don't even know the term. I don't even know the term. I mean... I'm not from the roots, you know? Uh, but, but, <laughs> but I'm the last child, and often they say the last children are the most expressive. And um, please don't take this as rude, and I'm not trying to desecrate the podium, but I would call my, my mom every anniversary. They would be celebrating their um, 50th wedding anniversary this year, and every anniversary on November the 2nd, I would call and say, hmm, still smelling the breath of that young man, eh? <laughs> and she would say, oh, Erica, that's your father. <laughs> Have some respect. <laughs> so respectfully, they would celebrate 50 years this year. Carmen was a natural caregiver and left her in-home duties to work at what is now, what was formerly known as the Villamont Royal, uh, a, long, a residential long-term senior center. Again, she was blessed to work with some wonderful Christian peers like Paulette Lee and Sister Lee, and it was amazing. And we have somebody waving her hand over there. Yes, we see you working very closely uh, at that center. And it was a very hectic environment. Uh, her entrepreneurial spirit, though, led her to healthcare, where she started her own in-home care business, supporting and caring for elderly and mentally ill patients while raising her three children, Paulette, Jason, and Erica. My mom's passion for learning prompted her to complete her secondary education at night school, where she earned several credentials in nutrition, pastoral counseling, and ministry. And if it's one thing you know, my mom studied. Um, I was going through her laptop and, uh, and her phone, and I, of course, you know, parents with technology, I saw that she took pictures of actual um, uh, lessons that she would then go back and make notes from. <laughs> Instead of just you know, doing the notes herself, <laughs> she would take pictures of the screen. And so she was a lo lifelong learner, and I know that's where we get our passion for lifelong learning as well and for education. In 2020, my mom became an author, writing and self-publishing two books. And as I mentioned to a few people, my mom was determined. She sent me the draft of her book at a time that I was extremely busy. And I said, Mom, I'm going to read the draft, trust me. And a week later, I called her and I said, um, I'm trying to open this file and I'm trying to, don't worry, it's finished, it's on Amazon. <laughs> I was like, really? And she, she got it done. So praise be to God, she's a self-published author. Uh, with the support of family and friends, she used the book sale proceeds to donate new laptops and tablets to students at the Woodland Primary School in Manchester, Jamaica. <laughs> and my siblings and I will continue to see this work through for that particular school. While working as an independent caregiver for over 30 years, she remained active in her church as a care group leader, prayer warrior, member of the Montreal West Gospel Choir, and so many other roles that she played, whether it was cook, whether it was chauffeur, 
whether it was driving teacher. I mean, there are many people who learned how to drive a car with that little blue Camry, if you remember. Um, she often is described as a humble, no-nonsense, kind and generous person whose home was a refuge to those in need of a meal or a listening ear. After a blessed and fulfilled life of service, ministry and travel, Carmen Samuel Shaw entered the gates of heaven peacefully surrounded by family at the Jewish General Hospital on Tuesday, February 6, 2024. And be all, half of all of us, I'd like to just read something that my mom wrote. She wrote, having a vision and fulfilling the task can be very challenging. Our mom was able to create a vision and live a life of purpose, filled with, uh, lived a purpose-filled life despite the challenges sent her way. She lived life full of love, grace, and care for others. And as we lay her to rest, we hope that you will follow your vision and life purpose. Thank you. That was Herica, <laughs> Jordan, <laughs> Shaw. See, the reason why I say that is because since Sister Shaw's passing, Herica has taken liberty to do what her mother would not allow her to do. <laughs> when she talked crazy, her mother was, Herica, stop. <laughs> but she's taken liberty, and so I just have to let you all know this is why her name changes so often <laughs> until she realizes what her mother has been telling her all this time. Shortly, we'll have a solo selection from Priscilla Finley. And following that, we'll have the sermon from Pastor Bishop Leroy Greenaway. But just before that, I just want to take a few moments just to speak directly to the family. A moment. Pastor Brother Shaw. Sister Shaw has been a blessed woman, as we've spoken about several times so blessed prior to coming to Canada, as we've heard, blessed at, in Canada. You've lived for 40, 50 years of those blessings, raised a family, started business. God has truly blessed you. I remember when we were here a little while back and we heard this, the song on the radio and I was saying, that song, every time I hear it, the faithfulness of God, I think of Sister Shaw, because God has been really been faithful to her. That doesn't mean it's always been easy or it's always been great, because that's what we assume that faithfulness means, is that every day it's sunshine. But that just means that even when there's rain sometime, God is still God. And there's going to be days, numerous days, that you're going to miss her. And you're going to call out to her. And you're going to wonder why and how. But can I assure you that the same God that has blessed you and blessed her all those years is the same God that's going to sustain you and keep you and hold you. And it's the same God that also still has a plan for you in this phase of your life. To her children, Herica, and Jason and Paulette. Death is a funny thing that it can rather divide a family or it can bring a family together. And far too often we see that death divides family. Can I say that I'm so proud of you that this is not your case? You guys had stuck together you guys had had difficult conversation, late night conversation, late night conversation, two late night conversations, too many of them. But you guys have worked through a lot of turmoil and have come to a lot of great decisions and it has not divided you, it has united you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Sister Shaw would be so proud of you. She spent many of days concerned and worried 
but look at y'all. You have done well. Can I encourage you? Erica, can I encourage you that the gifts that God has blessed you with, continue to use them. And the gifts he's blessed your siblings with, acknowledge and let them flourish, even when they're different than yours. Jason, the gift God has given you, use it. Continue to use it. And the gifts God has given your siblings, acknowledge it and let it flourish, even when it's different than yours. And Paulette, the gift God has given you, use it. And continue to love your husband more than anything else. <laughs> what? Too early? Too quick? <laughs> I'm just speaking from the heart. <laughs> the voice of God. <laughs> No, and, and to her granddaughters, to her nieces, her nephews, family and friends. Listen, she's just beat us to where we're all going. That's why we're rejoicing. She's just already there where there's no more pain, no more sadness, no more aches, no more crying. That's where no more concern and worry. She's already there. Can I say to the friends and family who know Sister Shaw, but the ones who don't know the Christ that she knows, during a funeral, we say very numerous things. This reminds us that we should be stronger as family, and we should be. This reminds us that we should have closer network, and we should have closer network. But you know what funerals remind me of more than anything else? That we need to know the Christ in which she knew. Because when times are good, Christ is there. And when times are not as great, Christ is there. And that's the life she lived. And so that's what we should know beyond anything else. So please know Sister Shaw, but also know the Christ in which she stood for and stood and believed in, even when times weren't as high as she planned. At this time, we'll have a soloist, a singer, Priscilla Findlay, and then a sermon from Bishop Greenaway. Praise God. Thank you, Jason, for having me. I want to give my condolences to the family. And it's an honor for me here to celebrate with you all the life of Miss Carmen. Um, my brother here has said everything that I would have liked to say. I'm not really a talker, but um, I really pray that this song encourages you and may he keep you in this moment and throughout the rest of your life. Temptation on every hand. Though Satan tried to stop me and to place my feet on sinking sand, but Jesus loves me dearly. He was there to answer. He was there always to protect me, for he's kept me in the midst of it all. It's not because I've been so faithful, no. It's not because I've always obeyed him. It's
it's not because I trusted him to be with me all of the way, but it's because he loves me so dearly, yes he does, he was there to answer my call, he was there always to protect me, for he's kept me in the midst of it all. Many hard trials, through temptation, the Satan's try, Satan's try to stop me and to place and my feet face on sinking sand. Sinking sand. Oh, but Jesus, Jesus loves me so dearly. Yes, He does. He was there to answer my call. He was there always to protect me. For he's kept me. He's kept me in the midst of it. the 
the way Jesus does. I know I can depend on him. He's my closest friend. He did. No, 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 nobody but Jesus. 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 He's my friend. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. 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 May God keep you in this season. And I thank you all for your grace. I, it was a challenge for me to come today because I have been going through some vocal issues, as you can hear at the end. But I pray that God has blessed you. And I just, I just thank you all for having me here today. It hasn't been easy. And I just thank God for keeping me. And I know God will keep you too. Amen. Thank you, Sister Priscilla. God bless you for that beautiful song reminding us today that Jesus kept me. Jesus kept us. Jesus kept the Shaw family. And he keeps on keeping the Shaw family, Deacon Shaw, and all the members of the family today. Special greetings to the bishops. I believe that's the bishop section over there. <laughs> to all our pastors and ministers. Special greetings to Bishop Brian. Well, at least we, we ordained him bishop for one day. He is bishop today. And he has done an excellent job. God bless you. Special greetings to our pastor, Pastor Joel Anderson's absence, who wanted so much to be here. And I also wanted to greet our outside pastor, Chester Ford. <laughs> yes. Chester pastors all of us and tells us what to do, what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to do it. Thank you, Pastor Chester. <laughs> I'm just so blessed to be here today. When I came to this church 38 years ago, yeah, I was young then. <laughs> Sister Shaw was in her 30s, and I was just climbing close to 30, and I, I used to have nice black wavy hair. Ebony, ebony prevailed, and then it was ebony and ivory, and then now it's ivory completely. The waves have gone, the hair has gone, but we're still here today. We survived because of people like Sister Shaw and the mothers of this church. I was young and ignorant, didn't know a lot of stuff, but those mothers stood with me, surrounded me, prayed for me, prayed me through. As I pastored them, they pastored me. And Sister Shaw indeed was certainly one who held us up in prayer faithfully. And so condolences to Deacon Shaw and to all the Shaw family today, to all the friends and loved ones. As I said, it was my distinct privilege and honor to serve as Sister Shaw's pastor for over 16 years. There were indeed some things that endeared Sister Shaw to me even more over the years. She had the same name as my mom, Carmen. And in many ways, she had, this, she had a similar disposition as my mom. Calm, gentle, loving, genuine, and caring. She cared for everybody. Secondly, 
my daughter and her have the same birth date. So every year we celebrated Jessica's birthday, we would remember Sister Carmen Shaw. We couldn't forget. I say what I'm going to say with no pretense or flattery. I say it not because I wanted to make up something to say in honor of the deceased, but honestly, if every member of the Montreal West Church of God of Prophecy were like Sister Carmen Shaw, we would have had a near perfect church. <laughs> Sister Shaw truly loved Jesus, and she genuinely loved the brethren. I believe that you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who had anything bad to say about Sister Shaw. In every way, she loved and cared for others, as you've heard, for the elderly. She earnestly cared about the young people. She looked out for the little ones. For many years, she served this local church as band leader, or better known today as care group leader or cell group leader. Regularly, she kept in touch with those under her care watching for their souls as a faithful shepherd. She faithfully assisted me in caring for the sheep, and she also prayerfully cared for me, regularly assuring me of her constant prayers and sisterly love. On numerous occasions, she would personally thank me for watching out for Paulette, Jason, and Erica, of course, for Stanley. She never took what I did for granted. It meant the world to her that I showed concern and she reciprocated. When I got married and we had kids of our own, she never failed to ask about Jessica and James. I think she's calling right now. <laughs> and even after we had moved away, she genuinely inquired about them. She loved the kids, all the kids of the church as her own. No partiality or putting down other people's children. I never took it lightly when she said she was praying for me. And Sister Shaw didn't just pray them quick fly by night, drive by prayers. She prayed them long meter church of God prayers. And I knew she meant it and I treasured her assurances of prayer greatly. Sometimes she just called to check in. There were few conventions or celebrations that we had after we had moved away that she didn't attend. She was the real deal. I'll never forget how she tended to her family. When Brother Shaw was deathly sick, she watched over him like a hawk, night and day, as a mother hen. And as we prayed for him in the hospital, I remember she literally broke down and wept so pitifully that God had to hear her. Amen. She prayed that God would spare his life, and he did. She rallied in prayer. God dispatched his angels Brother Shaw is still with us today, thank God. He had a praying, God-fearing, loving wife. She endeavored to always exemplify Christ, the Christ life, and she did it so well. I'd also never forget the night when she was asked to preach. <laughs> And she shared with us the revelation that God gave her about the babies. And she said, church, when the babies say goo goo gaga, what they're really saying is God is good, God is good. <laughs> and she excitedly informed us that even the babies praise him. And you know Montreal West. Montreal West never had any good sense, <laughs> including the leader and especially the leader at that time, we rolled. Even though she was as serious as a judge, 
you couldn't convince us to show that the babies are not praising God when they say goo goo gaga. So I always remember that now that I have my grandbaby, she's four months old, I'm waiting for her to say goo goo gaga. God is good, God is good. Of course, we'll never forget that. She just really loved us and we loved her right back. The love of God exuded from her. Today, it seems like if every time we look around, one of the church mothers here at Montreal is being called home. We just simply thank God for loaning them to us and sending them our way. In the last few years, there's been about 13 of the mothers who have been called home to glory, if not more. And I'm a witness that they did run their race, and they ran it well. And so some people are worried that they're dying, but God gave them to us, and the Lord has seen it fit now to take them home. Their work is done. Their race is run. Now it's left to us to finish the task. I think I can hear Sister Shaw say, Brethren, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. But she doesn't stop there. She goes on like the Apostle Paul to finish the thought. For the Christian, it is never only about yesterday. It is never just about the past, the ups and down, downs of yesterday the trials and tribulations of yesteryear, the trials and the triumphs, the scars and the bruises, bruises from yesterday's battles, the drudge and the toils of the journey, the twists and turns of yesterday's challenges, the dangers, toils, and snares of what we have been through, but it is also about the future, tomorrow, the next phase, the next step, eternity. We have got to come to the henceforth, from now on, up ahead, from this point forward. Some people get stuck, but you got to remember that all that, the ups and downs, the hardships, heartaches, the trials, the tribulations, the disappointments, the afflictions, the trauma, the drama, all that was necessary so that we can declare henceforth. Thank God it didn't stop there. I've had some lapses, tension, trauma, tragedies, even depression. But thanks be to God, all that led me to henceforth. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, the apostle Paul said, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. It is for real in scripture. No cross, no crown, no battle, no fight, no victory, no finishing the course, no crossing the victory line or the finish line. No keeping of the faith. No abundant entrance and crown of glory. You got to finish to come to this. And Sister Shaw can truly now say today, henceforth, when this life is over, notice the positivity, the assurance, the confidence, the expectation. There is now laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. There is coming a day, a day of sunshine, that day, a day of peace, joy, prosperity, elevation, a day when the former things shall be passed away, no more death. Hallelujah. No more sorrow. No more crying. Neither shall there be any more pain that day. A day of coronation and exaltation. A crown. The Lord, the righteous judge, shall be the organizer and the engineer. 
the enthroned one himself giving out the crowns. Yes, I shall wear a crown like common shore. There is laid up for her a crown of righteousness that fades not away. She has been begotten again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for her. All her life has been spent in service for others. All her life, she was always doing something for her family. She was always doing something for her friends, for others. Now, there is laid up for her a crown of righteousness. So many times, she put herself on the back burner for others. Put herself on the line. She sacrificed for others. Now is her time. Yes, sometimes in life, you think nobody cares. I don't know if anybody feels like that sometimes. Nobody sees. Nobody understands. But scriptures remind us that the righteous judge is so righteous that he is keeping the scores and the count. Laid up for her a crown of righteousness. Your crown awaits. People forget. He never does. How sad it is to have your work, your labors, your accomplishments never recognized or acknowledged or mentioned. To work and never to be appreciated or compensated or recompensed. To be taken always for granted. It may happen with family. It may happen in the church. It may happen with friends, but never with Jesus. It culminates with, well done, hallelujah, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Some people begrudge any kind of recognition we receive. Sometimes they look us cut eye because we're getting a little bit of recognition. But I wonder what they're going to do when the eternally enthroned one, the majestic one, his majesty, holds a special coronation service in your honor. Don't you realize that as we celebrate him, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we crown him King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he in his greatness also lays up for us a crown of righteousness. Our reward is, is solemnly guaranteed. It is not in vain. I don't want to encourage somebody today. It's not in vain. I want to encourage some pastor today, some evangelist today, some choir member today, some choir leader today, some husband, some father, some mother. It's not in vain. It's never in vain. Your preaching is not in vain. Your teaching is not in vain. Your fasting is not in vain. Your singing is not in vain. Your labors are not in vain. Your prayers are not in vain. Your toys are not in vain. After after a while, after a while, when this life is over, some glad morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away and ain't no devil in hell can stop me. Therefore, my beloved brethren, therefore, my beloved brother Shaw and Paulette and Jason and Erica 
and the son-in-law and the grandkids be steadfast, <laughs> unmovable. Don't let no devil stop you, no, no demon stop you, no sickness stop you, no trial stop you, no heartache stop you. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is going to be all right, you're going to be compensated, you're going to be recompensed. You need to tell some people, take your little praise. Keep your little praise. <laughs> some people can't even tell you thank you for what you've done. And you say, keep your little praise. The one with whom it really matters, he sees me. He's so calming. He's so calming Samuel's show. Every day, he carried her, he held her, he led her, he upheld her, he strengthened her all her life. And now, there's laid up for her. And so we weep. But don't forget to celebrate. Don't, don't forget to say, but thank you, thank you. Deacon Shaw, 49 years. And I know it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for you the days up ahead. Because she was a nurturer, a nourisher. She just had that loving nature, caring for everybody. It's going to be hard. But you also got to get up and say, thank you. Thank you that you led her and you guided her and Lord you overshadowed her and now you've seen it fit to take her home to glory and one day and one day and one day uh, hallelujah and to all them to all them not just for her but to all of us that love his appearing there is reserved for us a crown of the my crown awaits if you think I'm something now, you wait till I have my little crown. I'm going to shake my little head. And I want the demons to see me. My God is true and faithful. My God. Help me, my God, sustained me, my God, saved me, sanctified me, baptized me with the Holy Ghost, uh, and every single day of the journey, even when I went through the darkness and the shadow of death, I am able to say like the psalmist, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup. Run surely. I just, I just, I just want to tell somebody, hang on in there. I know this is a funeral service, but hey, can you hold somebody's hand and say, hang on in there? Can you? Hang on in there. Hang on in there. Hallelujah. Hang on in there. Hallelujah. Little Erica, hang on in there. Hang on in there. Jason, hang on in there. 
never give up. Paul said, hang on. Hang on in there. Hang on in there. If she made it, and she made it, hang on in there. If the mothers of this church made it, hang on in there. If Gladys Scarlett made it, hang on in there. If Emily Ford made it, hang on in there. If Dudley, uh, Dudley made it, hang on in there. If Patina Gale made it, hang on in there. If Sister Ice, if Sister McLean made it, hang on in there. It's gonna be all right after a while. After a while, in the morning, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. It's going to turn some way, somehow. Hallelujah. They tell me when one receives a knighthood from the king, queen, it elevates the recipient's personal profile and enhances their reputation. It is indicated that the award underscores their dedication and expertise, leading to increased trust, respect, and acceptance of their ideas, works, and projects. It is an honor indeed. However, I want to hear him say, well done. King Charles, keep your knighthood. I have something better. The real king. Uh, he is not going to knight me. He is going to coronate me. A crown. Uh, I mean, a real crown, you know. No, no, little fake, fake, fanky, fanky, little dollar store. Uh, <coughs> a real crown. I don't know if we're going to have any jewels in it. I love jewels, but I might not know. It's going to be a crown anyhow. A real one. I just want to hear him say, well done. As a boy, I used to long to hear any kind of acceptance and validation, affirmation from my father, which many times I never got. But to hear my heavenly father, mind you, I'm not saying my dad wasn't a good dad. He was a good dad, but he was a Caribbean dad. They didn't... <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know all this mushy mushy stuff that we know. Oh. But one day, my heavenly father, the real deal, he's going to say, Leroy, well done. Well done. I wouldn't even need a crown, really. Just to hear him say. That's why I labor. That's why I try to pastor this church faith. Not for the applause of men, because men are fickle. They'll praise you today and curse you tomorrow. 
You know many times they curse me here at this church. Ain't that right, Pastor Cole? Jesus, 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 Jesus. And when they see me, hey, hey, Pastor Greenway. <laughs> then as soon as I turn my back. <laughs> but that's all right. Because we're humans. We do madness. We mad people. But to hear him say, Oh God, oh God, to be welcomed by his eternal embrace, to know that he refused to have heaven without me, so he died to secure me, secure us a place. He didn't want heaven without Sister Carmen Shaw, so he died. To secure her a place in his ethereal glory. That's really something to rejoice about. Even in this funeral, this homegoing celebration. And I underline celebration. The devil could contest it all he wants to. All I know is our beloved Sister Carmen Shaw made it safely over. And so I see the devil fighting her, you know, coming up to the end. But all I know is the devil is a liar. And he is a defeated foe. The devil doesn't fight you if you don't have anything in you. And because of what she had in her. Oh God. But our victory has already been won. Unalterably won. Inarguably won. Decisively won on Calvary. And I just want to report today. Another blood washed, blood sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, heaven bound, fully committed, soldier of the cross, has made it safely over unto the other side. And there's something to shout about. And I'm coming down. The devil fought but he lost again for the bible declares with clarity it reminds us greater is he that is in me and that was Carmen Shaw's testimony greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world the greater one one the greater o-n-e W-O-N, the greater one, one. That's my testimony. The greater one, one. The greater one wins. The devil is a liar. Do what you want to do, devil. Say what you want to say. Devil, come on, you want to come. I am a victor. I am a conqueror. The Bible says we are more, more, we are the more people we extra bad you know I mean bad 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 so we even come to funerals we come to funerals and bring tambourines. We come to funerals and play music. We come to funerals 
and we play the drums. We come to funerals. And even when the knee is hurting, and the stenosis is acting up, we come to funerals. In Jamaica, they hire marching bands. All through the streets. When you know what you know, when the saints, you think we're going to get to glory? No, 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 no. We do extra for that. We going like this. When the saints, when the saints, when the saints, hallelujah, marching band, tambourine, hands up raised. The church is not a funeral society. We don't do funerals well. Brother Sean, I'm sorry, we don't do funerals well. They come to funerals like this. Want to jump in the hole, bang in the casket. No, we don't do that. She's home. She's home. When you go home, you, you get excited to be home. Paul, isn't that true? When you come here, you get excited for a little bit. Then you want to go after because this is not, this is, this is not home anymore. Home is with him. But when you, when you get to go home, she's home. Welcomed by the angels. We don't do funerals well. We turn funerals into revival meetings. <laughs> we turn funerals into parties. Jesus messed up every funeral he ever went to. He said, get up. Yeah. Death! Death! Call him out. Death! Is swallowed up! Oh, death! That's what the Apostle Paul did. He chaired a death. Oh, death! Oh, death! Where is thy sting? Oh, grave! Where is thy victory? Oh, how my, 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 my. Oh, the strength of sin is the law. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. And the sting of death is sin. But thanks be to God. Finish it for me. Thanks be to God who giveth us the victory. Pastor Mohin, thanks be to God. So we come here and we do the little tears thing. We got to cry. I don't tell Sister Chris the kind of funeral I want. I want her to be happy. But she got to do some tears. No, you got to give me some tears. Can you imagine anybody coming to my funeral? No, give me the whole works. Give me the tambourine and the singing. But I want somebody to... The church is not a funeral society. The devils don't like to come to our funerals. Because we're not dropping down on the ground and bawling and people stepping over us. And when we get to the graveside, want to jump in the hole. No, that is from Madea. <laughs> 
She's home. I'm journeying. I can't afford to make a mistake now in my old age. I'm too old to lose my mind and say I'm going back in the world. To do what? Just knew too old. The, the world don't want you back. Because the world ain't got nothing for you. You can't even fit in. You don't know how to do that. You know how to do this. She taught you how to live, how to walk. Stanley Shaw, she made you look good. And now that she's gone, you're not going to look no old and pitiful and no, you look good. She taught us to walk with grace for the same God that carried her. Same God that my parents served. That same God that gave them grace gives me grace. And I just want to tell some of you today who don't know the Lord, you are wasting your time. Now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. She didn't play. And after a serious bout of sickness, sickness, she got up and wrote a book. Two books she write? Boy, Jesus. So she, she taught us, you keep fighting. You live good. You live the Jesus life. Give your heart to Jesus. Repent now. Turn from your wicked ways. Confess your sins. Stop playing the fool. Turn around. Come to Jesus. That Jesus who saved her and lived in her is calling us today. Hallelujah. Saying to you, keep on living. I know we got to die you got to keep on living before you die Jason live Erica live the thief comes to steal kill destroy but Jesus said I'm come that you might have life and even when our loved ones go on before us we got to keep on living take up the baton Keep on, keep on, hang on in there, keep on living, enjoy your life. Deacon, you still here, you still here, and every day is a day of thanksgiving, a Jesus day, a day to give your heart, your life, your best. For the master, would you stand with me today? And so we didn't just come to have a pity party. We came with the biggest hope. The hope of life. And if that same Jesus that God raised from the dead, if he lives in us, when we sleep, when we die, God shall also bring us together with him. For it is stated and written, those of us who are alive in the resurrection scheme, we're not going to come before those who are dead. But the Bible says, for the Lord himself, <laughs> not, 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 not Gabriel, uh, not Raphael, not, not one of the angels that we don't know, but the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And I know some of us don't like loud church. Yeah, sometimes I don't like it either. 
But sometimes, sometimes you gotta get loud. Oh, sometimes you gotta let the devil know. Sometimes you gotta make a joyful noise. For, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. Trumpets don't sound. Trumpets are loud. And if I wasn't so hoarse, I would try and do a trumpet blare, but I can't. And the dead in Christ <laughs> shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. We're going right up into Satan's headquarters. You know, he's the prince of the power of the air. But we're going right up there. There's, there, there's going to be a meeting. We're going to have a time. You've seen me shout before, right, Jason? Yeah. When I get there, I will have no arthritis then. So, I mean, we're going to have a time to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. As we bow our heads, there might be somebody here today who does not know Jesus as Lord. He's calling you. Wants to save you even now. In this funeral service, as you bow your heads, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving your life. Thank you for dying so that we can have life, have it more abundantly. Thank you for making provisions for us to come to know you as Savior. Even right now, there is some young man that you are speaking to, that you're calling, that you are wrestling with, that you are wooing to you. Even now, cause him to surrender. Cause him to confess you as Lord. For if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Now, Lord, save some young lady. Now, Lord, minister to some young couple who's having a hard time. Even now, work a miracle right now, even now. Save, deliver, do a miracle. You are the miracle work in God. Somebody needs a miracle. Heal somebody now. Even now, right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, command healing for somebody. Rebuke the tumor. Rebuke the arthritis. Rebuke the cancer. Rebuke the cardiovascular disorder. Rebuke the respiratory problem. Even now, God... For you are the God that come and show trust it. And you were faithful. Thank you for being in this gathering. Continue to encourage the hearts of this family. We ask it in Jesus' name. Just one more thing can you do for me. I wonder if some of our ministers can just come and stand right before the family. And just, to, just pray a prayer for them. Just, just touch them. Just touch them. Here is Deacon Shaw. Just lay hands and just hold their hands. Bishop Lee, just touch somebody. And thank you, Brother Everton. Just, just lay hands on the family. God bless you.
to the cousin, everyone, you move, you move, God, you move, Jesus, God, speak, Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God, right now, sustain them, not just today, God, but for tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after, God, let the Spirit of God move upon them, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' holy name. them, God. Touch them, Heavenly Father, God. In days when they feel low, touch them, God. In days they feel strong, anoint them, Father, God. In Jesus' name, here in Montreal, in Jamaica, all over the world, let the Spirit of God move like only you can. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, God. Praise God. We thank you, Father, God. Thank you, Lord God. I'm going to ask you to be seated for a while. You have heard the message. You have heard so many things said on behalf of the family and Sister Carmen. And we're going to, and prayer is already offered on behalf of the family, but we're going to have another prayer. And in this manner, I want to say something about Sister Carmen, something that a lot has been said. But she wasn't well at a time, and her daughter Erica brought her down to Toronto to stay with her for a while. I think it was two weeks since that she's there. But Sister Carmen heard of a church in Brampton that they were running a, a soup kitchen and serving lunch. And she came down to rest. Not church of God of prophecy. Another church. And went there to help them serve. Did you hear what I said? She went down to rest, but she heard that this church were feeding the public, and she went there to do her part, helping them, a people person, a praying mother, a loving mother. What I would love to do at this time is, over the past few years, a lot of our praying mothers from this local church has gone home to be with the Lord. And Sister Carmen was one of them. If over the past two years, two or three years, if you are here today and your mother has gone home to be with the Lord, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask you to stand all over this building. Just remain standing for me. Your mother has gone home to be with the Lord over the last two years. I'm going to ask my daughter to join me a little bit here. I want to do something a little bit unusual. I took a few quotes from mom's prayer, from some prayer. And I'd like for her to read a few of these just quotes for here. I am one lazy human being, but I know that there is somebody that's got me covered in her prayers. And yeah, my mom's prayer keeps me going, but I don't know why I'm lazy just to go down on my knees and pray for myself. Maybe it's because of stress, or maybe it's because of time. In one way or the other, I am definitely too lazy to pray for myself, but I am grateful for a praying mother who covers me and undergirds me. Today I will rise and I will find the strength to pray for myself. Thank you for praying mothers. 
Which one? I don't know where I'd be without my praying mother. My mom used to print a lot of prayers. She used to write a lot of prayers, and uh, <laughs> my dad has them. Um, I'm 100% confident that my mother's prayers have saved my life more times than I can imagine. I remember my mother's prayers, and they have always followed me. They have clung with me throughout all my life. Abraham Lincoln. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask a few mothers to come by, to stand with me. Sister Anderson, come. Is she here? Sister Anderson. Sister Chris. Sister Morrison, Sister Johnson, come along. And all you that are still standing, uh, any more that is here, your mother has passed in the past two years or so. Many have been praying, mother, of this local church. Sister Ford, Sister Cole, Sister Tenney, Sister Lee, now Sister Carmen joining them and many others. I'm going to ask these mothers to join in praying. You that are standing there and your mother has gone on, I'd like for you to stretch your hands towards the Shaw's family at this moment. Just stretch your hands towards them. And as these mothers pray in your behalf, in all of us behalf, that are standing. Hallelujah. Sister Scarlett and all of them that has gone on. Sister McQueen. I'm going to ask you to come and pray for them. Father God, we come before your presence. We thank you, God, for our mothers. We thank you for the life that they gave to us. We thank you for the love that they gave to us. We thank you for the time that they spent with us. We thank you for how they held us, how they comforted us, how they taught us, how we could trust in them. We thank you for their love. And as we bow in your presence at this time, God, we pray specifically for the Shaw family. God, a prayer of comfort. Lord, as we celebrate the life of Carmen Shaw today, as we celebrate, God, her love, not just to her own family, but to so many other families, God, today, we thank you. And as we think about our mothers and all the other mothers that you have called home, we thank you, God, that heaven is their home. And we pray, oh God, that as we celebrate these lives today, we remember the family, God, who have lost loved ones. But we thank you, God, that we can remember our loved ones with joy. And God, in times when the tears roll down our face, and when we feel that we're all alone, God, the memories, Lord God, the songs, the laughter, the words, will bring us joy and bring us comfort. So today, oh God, we thank you. We thank you for who you are to us. We thank you for you, who you have been to us. And we thank you for what our mothers have been to us. Bless all those who stand today. Bless the Shaw family, God. We pray, Father, that we will never forget we will never forget. When the tears roll, we will never forget that the tears will turn into a smile and we'll remember the joy. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, for our mother's prayers. Thank you, God, for the times when they dragged us to church. Thank you, God, for the love that they gave us. May your will continue to be done in our lives today. And may we continue to be examples of our mother's love and share that love with others. We pray your will be done. We thank you, God, for this day. And as we continue to celebrate, God, continue to be with us. We thank you, God, for your blessings, for your love, for your care. May your will be done now continually, we ask. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. 
It's my challenge to you. I'm challenging you. Meet your mother on the other side. Remember mom's prayer? She prayed for you. She prayed for me. Everyone, everywhere. They are, they are gone on. But remember, one said 100% sure I wouldn't know where I would be today if it wasn't for my mom's prayer. Oh, God bless you all. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Cole. We're just about to wrap up. We are on time. Praise Jesus. Praise God. And he met us here, and we're still on time. Someone from the funeral home is going to come and give us instruction about the burial. Please do not. I know that you're anxious to get up and leave. I know you're hungry. I know you need to get to the restroom. But if you can just sit still just for a moment, they're going to give us instruction. And they do need to take out um, the casket. And the family needs to go ahead. So they're going to give us instruction. So if someone from the funeral home can make their way up to give us instruction about the burial. In the meanwhile, I will let give you instruction about the repass. The information is on the back of the brochure. Please read it. The venue opens at 3.30, so please um, don't get there before 3.30. 3.30 is when the venue opens, and we'll have someone from the funeral home come and give us instruction at this time. Good afternoon. My name is Sandra. I am the funeral director um, with my teams. Um, so we're going to the Rideau Garden Cemetery. Uh, the better thing is to follow us because there's a lot of people here. Um, be careful with the, um, the stop and the red light. Don't pass by. So um, follow us. Uh, we're going slowly and uh, everything should be okay. So I'm gonna repeat, it's at the Rideau Garden Cemetery. Um, so we're going to leave right now, and I'm going to ask uh, the family members to come. We're going to leave right now. Yes, yeah, so the pallbearers will come, and they will help to move the casket out. Then the family will follow, and the ushers will then start directing the family out by section at that point. section of the cemetery everything's on the back of the no. so we don't have the section but uh, the address is uh, 4275 Boulevard des Sources de l'Art des Ormeaux H9B 2A6 I've, I don't know if you have your GPS so you can put the address 4275 Boulevard des Sources de l'Art des Ormeaux. You need me to repeat? It's, 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 uh, it's okay? Okay. So see you there. Okay. Okay, if the pallbearers can start making their way. And the family will follow. The pallbearers. meeting them at the door okay and if you can just stay seated while they take her out and just before we leave if you can just bow your heads let's just say a blessing of benediction as we go 
same that one that is said in the book of Numbers, verse 6. It says, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In this time, may the Lord continue to give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Hallelujah. Rejoice in 
we about ready to go home. Grew up in a good old Baptist church.
Right now, you're listening to all your music on shuffle mode with the Spotify free experience. Explore how to tune into your favorite playlists and albums in any order without hearing ad breaks with Spotify Premium. Oh, <laughs> 
Tell me. 